What is up, ladies and gents? I'm Joaquin with JCC Adventures. So good to have you back. Sorry I haven't posted a video recently, or actually, past couple months I haven't posted a video, so I apologize for that, but I just haven't had time to uh, film and edit videos, so. But hopefully here in 2020, we'll be switching that up and showing you more of my uh, stuff that I'm doing on my truck, and hopefully get out uh, doing some overlanding and camping and hiking, so stay tuned for that. And, but today, we are going over the truck. I'm going to show you some basic uh, maintenance stuff that I like to do to make sure the truck is in uh, good working order and everything's in tip-top shape. Alright, so one of the things that I like to do is go around to each tire and get a little bit of uh, soapy water and go around and hit the rim, go around it, and then the valve stem, take the uh, valve stem cap off and then hit that as well with some water, soapy water there, and uh, let it sit for a bit, and then go around probably in the next five minutes and check it out and see if there's any bubbles uh, forming, and that means that you got a, got a slow leak. One of my front tires has a slow leak, and I'll show you what, the, uh, what it looks like after about five minutes or so. All right, so here's my front tire that actually has a leak, and I did this probably about five minutes ago, and you can see all around the tire, kind of, you can see bubbles coming out of the uh, rim there between the actual tire and rim. Right there it's pretty bad, but if you go back to the one that I did back here, this is a rear tire and this one does not have any bubbles. So that's good. And this one actually I haven't had to top off with air, so it kind of shows you how you can find some leaks and eventually I'll have to take this tire off and reseat the bead and probably put something on there to seal it a little better so I'll have to do that at some point soon so but till then I'm just gonna have to fill up the tire with air every week or so all right for the next part it's just kind of the basic checking your uh, engine oil and your transmission fluid um, on some on this truck I know you have to have the engine running to check the transmission fluid um, so I'll probably do that later but right now I'm just gonna check the consistency of it and the smell sometimes if it's really old and sometimes starting to get burnt means it's been overheated a little bit it starts to smell like popcorn so you don't really want that once it starts to smell like popcorn it's no good so I'm gonna check those Oh, the engine oil is a little low. Probably add a little bit. I think the engine oil is probably settled by now. There we go. We're just about there. Do another splash and we should be good. I'm gonna check the transmission fluid. Oh wow, that actually smells really good. It looks quite good as well. Oh yeah, it's still nice and red. It smells good, it smells like fresh transmission fluid. When I bought the truck, the uh, dealer actually just changed the fluid, so I've run almost about 30,000 miles, so perhaps maybe this summer I'll change out the uh, fluid and filter. So stay tuned, I'll do a video on that. So, but other than that, once I have the truck outside and running on level ground, I'll check the level, but I don't think it'll be low or anything. So that looks pretty good. Oh man, get in there. All right, next up, I'm gonna check the air filter. Uh, it's been a while since I've checked it. It's a uh, k and uh, I forget what they call it, but it's one of the K&N uh, red filters. And they're supposed to last a lifetime, but this one is actually one that I bought for my 
other truck that was a 2004 Silverado and they fit the newer one so I swapped it out for this newer truck and it might be time to get a new one so I don't know I feel like whenever I'm at a higher elevation the uh, truck seems to downshift a little more so it might be time for maybe even a cold air system or a, what I may do is keep this uh, original factory box because it pulls pulls air from the cool air from the fender fender well and uh, might just swap out for a new filter and just get a, a different tube for the uh, intake because the one that doesn't have any uh, any of the resonators um, so it's just a straight shot into the throttle body and those probably not a ton of horsepower gain but it'll be a little something that'll make the engine breathe better so I may do that this year when I uh, save up a little money for it so but it might be time for a new filter that's not too bad I don't know if you can see that that well but it's a little dirty but right here you can see it's been cracked there and I put some tape on there to kind of keep it together a little bit so I'm gonna blow it out real quick and then see where we're at all right yeah definitely time for a new filter I'm gonna sometimes if you can if you can't really see daylight looking through it then you know you need a new filter this one you can still see daylight through so it should be okay for now but I think eventually I'll be getting a new filter all right another thing I like to do is check the batteries check the health um, there's a couple different ways you can do it uh, there's a load test that it actually puts a load on your battery and it measures uh, the voltage after a certain amount of time um, that's a that's a great way probably the best way to test your batteries um, but the way I'm gonna do it is just with a multimeter I'm gonna just kinda check the static uh, voltage I don't know what it says there uh, what is it 12 point something um, I like to see about I don't know between 12.2 to 12.8 is uh, usually a good voltage to see. Um, I'm sure there's a chart out there. I may even put it in the video. Um, but uh, this one, let me see. I was showing you guys what it actually is at. Let's see. 12.2. Okay. So this is the uh, the main battery. So there's probably uh, static load on it right now, even though the truck's off. Um, there's still certain uh, loads on it uh, so that will draw it down uh, but this is probably an older battery this might be even the factory battery it looks like it's actually a AC Delco so it could be the original battery so it might be might be time to change it at some point um, so but I'm gonna check the secondary battery all right now the secondary battery this one this one actually has some load too from the uh, lights on the switches those are on all the time so uh, I'm kind of curious to see what this one reads. I can't read it there, but you guys can see it. Let me see for myself here. All right, 12.6, almost 12.7. Uh, that's pretty good. So this is a newer battery than that one. So, but you want to kind of make sure that both batteries are at the same age the best best way to do it is have two of the same exact batteries buy them at the same time so they're they age the same um, but the thing is with these I have a uh, solenoid that separates them when the truck is off so that will uh, uh, keep one battery so say that like that battery is a little lower life-wise um, it'll keep the uh, battery separated so the the worst battery is not drawing a load from the battery that has a higher voltage so that will help the batteries last a little longer too if you're running a dual battery setup another test that I forgot to show you guys is one where you measure from one of the posts to the actual housing of the battery you do in ohms 
Now, I'll show you guys here in a minute what I'm talking about. But this one actually looks pretty good. I'm not reading any uh, continuity between the actual battery post and the battery housing, so that's good. Um, that means that you have build up on top of the battery. You know, sometimes you get that white corrosion around the terminals. Um, that means that there's actually going to be a, a connection between the two terminals. So that can also drain your battery when uh, it's not in use. Actually, I'll show you guys here what I'm talking about. Hopefully you guys can see that. But here I have one lead on the terminal post and the other one on the housing. And there shouldn't be any continuity. So that is good. Now I'm gonna try the other post. There we might have some. No, nope, still nothing. So that's good. That's always a good test to do. Um, if you do have continuity on there, a good way to get rid of that is get some uh, baking soda and maybe a little bit of water and maybe like a toothbrush. Kind of pour a little bit on top, kind of brush away. Sometimes you can get some, some grease on there and that will help uh, get rid of the, uh, the battery acid that sometimes can get on top. Um, especially with older batteries. Uh, the newer batteries aren't as bad, but uh, that's a good way to get rid of that and it'll definitely help the life of your battery. All right, so another test that not everyone can do because my setup's a little different with the dual battery setup. I have the uh, solenoid that separates the two batteries. One thing I wanna make sure that it's working correctly, I'm gonna check, make sure that both batteries are indeed actually separated. So I'm gonna go between this terminal goes to the main battery. This other terminal goes to the secondary battery. And I have 2.39 mega ohms. So, I'll show you guys that. Hopefully, you can see it. Hopefully, it's not glaring. But right there. Now, so there's a little, little bit of continuity there, but it's in the mega ohms. So, that's, that's high enough where it, it won't be drawing one battery from the other. So that's good, just wanted to double check on that. So all good there. All right, another test I like to do is the brake fluid. Brake fluid is pretty important. Um, as the brake fluid ages, it's unable to, it actually loses its properties to dissipate heat. So you build up a lot of heat in your brakes. So I know uh, my truck, I came down a, a mountain one time and uh, the, heat, the brakes heated up quite a bit. So I know that uh, brake fluid, you want to make sure it's uh, clean, it makes brake jobs a lot easier, I know that for a fact. Um, so one trick that I like to do is take a white piece of paper and you dip it in and you pull it out, see if you guys can see that. But it looks pretty good, um, looks clear, still has, uh, looks like it has like a greenish, greenish color. So that's a, that's a good sign. So probably eventually I will change the fluid out, at least uh, take out the fluid from the reservoir and just put in new fluid so I don't have to bleed the brakes. So I may do that maybe this summer or something. But brake fluid looks good for now. Um, so yeah, brake fluid is very important. All right, and another great check that I like to do is check the coolant level. Um, right there you can see the uh, cold level. Um, as the engine heats up, it'll actually expand, so the reservoir will actually have more fluid in it when it's hot. So it's kind of odd that the cold level is so high, but hey, manufacturer knows best, so that's just a quick check you can do. Um, yeah, other than that, not much to do other than just check the level. Another good check is the belt. Um, you can, I don't know if you guys can see right there. And then you can check the ribs. A lot of the times on a section like this one here, on a section like this one here, you can see cracks going across these ribs. And that's usually a, a good tell that 
the belt may need to change or if you're hearing a lot of squeaking. So I know sometimes if you run big accessories um, and you have a high load, uh, if you don't have a, uh, a good belt on there, it can actually slip on the pulley. So say you have a, a winch or a plow, um, it'll actually slip on the alternator and uh, you won't be actually getting as much amperage as you need out of it. So belt's always a good, good thing to check, make sure it's uh, not ripped or cracked. So this one looks good, so give it a thumbs up there. All right guys, went through the list of all the stuff that I usually check on a uh, kind of monthly basis or so whenever I have time. Uh, it's a good thing to check, make sure everything's running smoothly, keeps your rig up to date and just peace of mind, which is always nice. So I'm sure I'm missing some stuff. Uh, if you guys have any questions or if you want to add anything to this list, uh, I'll actually put this list in the description so you can copy and paste it. Um, so if you guys have any things you want to add, put those in the uh, comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, guys, that's it for today. Hope you liked the video. Hope you found it informative. Like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.